Well, I guess, are we live? We are live. We, we are right now officially live. I, I, we were almost late. I almost missed the time. I was sitting here paying attention to old shows and looked down and it was like flashing. <laughs> start time, start time. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at my screen. I Normally, I have that little live icon. It pops up there and I don't see it for some reason. Yeah, well, I know we're live on YouTube because... Uh, well, I just got my email notification for it. I, it's been a busy, long day. I have sat in front of this computer screen, staring at pixels most of the day. Well, I know, and you, you're you're being highly encouraging of me to do the same. The, so I guess I'm going to have to get a set of glasses like you, right? Is that yeah. Actually, I need to go have these checked. Uh, it's like I'm half cross-eyed now looking at my screen. I hadn't had my prescription checked and changed and. I don't know how long, long time. Well, hey, we got a good show on tap tonight. We've got a ton of content, and we're going to span all over the place, I think, right? Well, I think so. Uh, we've got some kind of first church update. Uh, we've got our, uh, a guest, Mike Eccles. Now, he's been on the show before, but if I remember correctly, I think we had him on under the Louisiana Watch banner. Uh, and it's been, I don't know, a, a year or so since we've had Mike on, but he's always a good guest. And we're going to go in-depth into the Charter Commission meeting. Also, I think you kind of went through some of the Cypress District meeting. So the recent one that I attended, we may talk about that some. And, well, apparently, we're going to walk on water. Well, what would a Bozier Watch show be without us talking about walk on water yeah and, and look hey it's highly appropriate right now because my front yard is a lake well hey did you did you see or did y'all see you know thanks everybody for tuning in and starting to watch the show did you see where the supreme court basically put their foot down on texas well i wasn't gonna say they put their foot down but they uh upheld an injunction filed by the government against texas to enable the government to go and take Texas's, you know, barbed wire fences down to keep the illegals out. So the federal government, wait, let me make sure I heard you because I'm pretty tired. I didn't sleep very good last night. And I've been staring at the screen all day. Did you just say that the federal government is going to now go and uh, take down Texas's barbed wire fence? <clears throat> so Did you I know how that? Texas, you know how Texas like, kicked Homeland Security or the mm -hmm. or the government basically out down there from guarding the border, which they haven't been doing, right? And Texas said, we got it. Right. And so they yeah. started putting up barbed wire and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the government apparently appealed to uh, the Supreme Court for an injunction to block Texas from denying the government from going in and taking their fences down. Okay. Now, some people say that, oh, the government's just, uh, you know, they haven't heard the case yet and they they approve the injunction until they hear the case. They hadn't actually ruled on it. But by default of them, uh, you know, approving the injunction, that allows the government to go in and take Texas's barbed wire down. Mm -hmm. So guess what? That, that happened yesterday. Okay, but wait, I got to ask you a question. Does taking okay. down the barbed wire include taking down that deal that they put in the middle of the river with the little tumbler things on it and the, you know, saw blades in the middle of it to chop up all the Mexicans and make tacos. Well, I'm not sure about that particular <laughs> part of the, the fence. That, and the, it, it's a little you know, inappropriate to say, but that's I, I, what some on the left are saying. Although Texas did put a set of buoys that literally roll. So when, you know, the illegal migrants try to crawl over them, they get tumped back in the water. Well, I don't know about that one, but what I can tell you is, is you know what Texas was doing today? Were they at war with the federal government? No, they were putting up more wire. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this could lead to like an actual skirmish. Well, I, I mean, the thing is, is I mean, if a, if a, a state can't protect their own borders right. and the government who is supposed to refuses to do it or is is intentionally not doing it then i i, I think the constitution gives states the right to uh, take some action i think well like i always say um 
the Constitution, as much as we would like for it to be, you know, fairly, fairly stagnant and, and the way it is, the Constitution is fluid. I mean, it's the whole reason we have the judicial system and it gets interpreted and the federal government's interpretation certainly does not always match up to what we think it should be or states or, you know, pick whoever. Well, well, I mentioned that about the border, and I guess what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take our little break, our little short break, and we'll come back and, you know, I will, why is that relevant to walk on water? And we'll follow up why that's relevant. I'll, I'll lay it out there for you. Well, well, that sounds like a plan. Let me hit the magic button, folks. If you're new here, here's what we're about to do. We're going to go into about a three minute countdown and about a 30 second little sponsor intro that gives you time to go pop some popcorn, make you a stiff, good drink and share and tag the show out while you're out there. Text people. If you have to let them know we're online, we're going to be talking about first church. We got Mike Eccles on who's a state rep from over around Monroe. We're going to talk about the charter commission meeting. I've got video for that. And, well, we're going to talk about illegal aliens getting tumped over in the middle of the river while the federal government rips down the barbed wire. So we'll be right back in about eh, three and a half minutes. Here we go, Mr. Lowry. It's new. A lot of the back office on the politicians that they think walk on water, uh, they would be shocked. You know, there's an old wound from a knife in my back that just is giving me heck lately and it's just really irritating so i have to kind of wiggle around a little bit well I, i've not heard my name in stable or baton rouge in stable in the same sentence in a long time and i titled it a shot across the bow of the good old boys just you know they feel helpless they don't feel heard they have nowhere to turn some republicans as well believe that government has the answers and let me tell y'all something i don't know anything government does well nothing and aren't there laws that say that you have public meetings so that the public can have accountability of their elected officials? They're making a little bit of progress, but I would definitely have to give uh, give the race to Cattle Parish right now. I don't know. Is there anybody from Plain Dealing watching, you think? As a member of the media, I'm very concerned about the what I've just heard. Did you or did you not requisition uh, some money to fight against this or for you? We hired a, uh, a lobbyist that cost us fifteen thousand dollars. We were opposed to a bill HB six hundred. So for this week, folks, the cockroach of the week, according to Bozier Watch and Duke Lowry and Rex Moncrief, is Raymond Croon's legislative assistant, <laughs> Allie Feaster Smith. Thank you, Allie. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not thinking Star Wars at all. I'm thinking <laughs> zombie apocalypse. No way. Oh, okay, it was not okay. You know it wasn't David Montgomery. David okay. ain't gonna jump off in there with Chris. Okay. He don't do it. He'd soon spit on him as he would even look at him. Man, this is a Mickey D's Krispy Kreme wheat. Didn't you know? Who, who's paying y'all? And if you're driving on the roads, are you safe? Uh, it's in the road, yeah. Well, I know you're on the road, but I mean, is this all <laughs> folks coming from the border down there? Yeah, it's going to the border. It's actually it's going to Mexico, the buses. Doesn't mean they interpret it the same way that I do. For instance, the Second Amendment. I take it very literally. That's been interpreted different ways in the court system all the way up to SCOTUS. Yeah, that's only going to cause more division that he claims he doesn't want to cause. And it's only going to cause more suspicion. We're still right now combined on both pages in YouTube at 264 people watching. That is amazing, Fo Coleman Project, the Walker Place deal, through conscious shocking action. The purpose of their actions was to stop plaintiffs, being the Uel Coleman and, and associated groups, not from developing Walker Place. But here's a key thing which in turn would enrich sitting city council members Scott Irwin and David Montgomery Jr. You hit the button. Does that mean that uh, people are like seeing us sitting here talking and well, chatting? Well, in theory, you know, it's an every week thing. We got to double check and make sure it's like a miracle any of this actually works. This Bozier Watch live broadcast is brought to you by 
The Outdoor News, fishing and outdoors for our area. Acadiana Mortgage, over 23 years in the mortgage business. Pelican Training and Consulting. Smarter Geek, making technology easier. And the many supporters, donations, and folks sharing information and watching out for Bozier. Now, grab your popcorn and a drink. Here we go. And we are back again, Mr. Lowry. We've got our guest in the green room, so uh, whenever we want to bring him on, we can. We'll, however we want to do it. You know, we usually fly by the seat of our pants anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, he probably don't want to be associated with us, with us uh, talking about walk on water. But, I mean, uh, you know, we might can skip that part and save that for later, but... (laughs) <laughs> you never know what you're going to get with this show. <laughs> you never know. But, uh, hey, we, we we do need to come back to the first church. We do need to come back to walk on water. I mean, look, he, you know, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to give him a I'm going to give him a little bit of a pass here. I mean, it ain't like he's got an easy job. But the fact of the matter is, and I'll say this just today, there's this new video going around on Twitter. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's this. uh individual with a Middle Eastern accent, and he's saying basically arrogantly to the camera, you know, you're too stupid to know who I am, and you're not you're not smart enough to know who I am, but you're going to find out who I am oh, real yeah, soon. I saw, yeah, I saw that. I saw a clip of it. Well, well, I got the link right there in the notes if we want to show everybody what we're talking about. Yeah, is that the uh, We Are the Woke link? No, uh, it's the first one under the Walk on Water. first one, all right, I think... Uh... Uh, well, I think it's this one. Yeah, it is. All right. So hold on a second here. I'm, I'm a little slow this evening. <laughs> Bear well, with you're me. in that habit of not looking at the notes. I, I know what you're doing. Well, yeah, it's only cause I'm scrambling, pushing other buttons. That's the video you want, right? Yeah. But, and this is why this is important. And the point I'm going to make, play that video and listen to what this individual says. Okay. Here we go. By the way, if you are smart enough, you would know who I am, but you are really not smart enough to know who I am. But soon you're going to know who I am. Very wow. Very Wait a minute. The, the entitlement. The entitlement. Uh, no, believe me. I'm much better than that. The entitlement, okay. guys. That's it. Wow. <laughs> well, that he, didn't sound like a Mexican accent or Spanish accent. That sounded a little, I don't know, kind of had a little Middle Eastern. Well, well, it, it, didn't it. Take, it didn't take long for the Internet to find out who he is. Uh-oh. So there's there's another link down in the notes. <laughs> Gotta Thanks. love the interwebs. Is it this one? <laughs> that one right there. They've identified the guy. Well, let's dig uh, the hole for Mike Eccles a little deeper, and we'll just dive right <laughs> off into terrorists. This has nothing to do with Mr. Eccles. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But go ahead. All right, here we go. If you are smart enough, you would know who I am. But you are really not smart enough to know who I am. But soon you're going to know who I am. Oh. Uh oh. So, this hmm. guy is like some Muslim terrorist organization chairman guy. He just got out of jail in January, and here wow. he is at our border, walking across the border and saying, You're going to know who I am real soon. All right, so let me go ahead and pause that and let me give everybody the warning. <laughs> if we get kicked off of Facebook, we're on YouTube and Twitter. If we get kicked off of YouTube, we're Facebook and Twitter. If we get booted, we're not going to stop and start the show again like we have before. We're just going to keep rolling. <laughs> so you have to figure out what platform we're on since Duke is again trying That's, to get us kicked off. I'm, I'm doing everything in my power, and I've been successful before. <laughs> I know that I can reclaim that title again. But look, <clears throat> here's the thing, and this is why I bring this up about Walk on Water. I mean, you know, all this money that we just spent, mm-hmm. you know, that that the the Biden budget and we sent a buttload of it over to Ukraine, more money to Ukraine. But what would what did we do about our border? It's still wide open. Right. And what's the most powerful thing we've got in D.C. to do something about it? Apaches. Well, F-16s if you're Joe Biden, but the power of the purse and who wields the ultimate authority in the house over there. Right. Well, that, let's see. Is he, am I saying it right? He's third in line. Yeah. Cause you got president and vice president and speaker of the house. 
Yeah, but but here's the deal. So we kind of gave him a pass. We said, you know, I mean, if you were in his shoes and they're they're saying this is what's going to happen if you don't enable the money to go to Ukraine, right? And and then something you know really extreme, World War Three or whatever happens, you know, and and, you, and you're him. You know, I don't know that I want that on my shoulders. Well, guess what? This guy just walked across the border, and by all accounts, it appears he's a bad guy, and he's sitting there saying something's fixing to happen here at home. So if you're walk on water, I mean, do, do is we're having to wear those shoes any different than the ones you were threatened with over Ukraine, potentially? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just saying. It's a complicated problem. Look, I don't expect him to solve that any more than I expect him to, you know, solve our debt issues or any of those other things. I expect him to go along, to get along, just like every other speaker before him. I get it. Yep, yep. Ma You're right. Maybe, well, maybe you have more faith in your buddy Mike than I do, but... I, I think well, when he walks on water, he still gets his toes wet. But anyway. At, at the rate this is going, I, I think he's going to get chewed up and spit out just like McCarthy. Mm, it's, a, it's a possibility. For, for the sake of Louisiana, I hope that's not the case, but I think that's what's where it's going to. All right, so I got a question for you, and then we'll, we can move on or whatever. Uh, have you been getting any of these phone – we've mentioned this before, but have you been getting any of these phone calls from reporters digging in them? MJ? Well, of course, the Washington Post, the Guardian. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. I'm missing one. There's another one. Um, yeah. uh, what was that? But, but, but apparently, according to the text to you, I've been blocking them. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe so. Oh, the Daily Beast, which, you know, left-wing deal. But look, I've just pointed them to our shows. It's simple. And, and it, look, it's publicity for us. I mean, it gets us at least one or two more people watching because they, ha they have yeah. to go through and watch the shows to figure out what the heck we talk about. Okay, so look, I know that our guest is just sitting there waiting in the rings, <laughs> being tortured. He's like, let me in, let me in. Let me he, he, might, let me he, might be trying, he might be trying <laughs> to figure out how to hit the hang-up button and get off this show. <laughs> I, I'm sure, I'm sure. So let's bring him in and let's see All what right. he thinks. Okay, so let me see if I can get this to work here. Hold on just a second. Let me hit that button, that button. All right, Mike, can you hear so, us? So so when you guys were talking about walking on water, I thought you were talking about those wood ducks that I missed, and uh, they skirted <laughs> along the water away from me. Oh, I, I don't know who you're hear, talking about. I don't want to hear about wood ducks when I've been sitting in front of a keyboard all day. Oh, we're going to get to the ducks, Mike. You just wait. <laughs> All right. So well, you got to you got to tell us. So you're from, you know, the Monroe area for those that are new to the show. So uh, give us an approximate location you were hunting. I used to, you know, live in Monroe and West Monroe and uh, my dad's side of the family's from Monroe and I've hunted it a few places over there. So. So, uh, so I represent Washita Parish now, um, Monroe, West Monroe, Sterlington, and I'm from Morehouse Parish, formerly represented them prior to uh, this last change of uh, district maps. But I was actually hunting in Caldwell Parish uh, in Columbia, about 25 miles from where I uh, live. And so it's a uh, I know where that pretty is. quick Spot trip. Spotted dog sporting goods down there. Absolutely. <laughs> Some of the finest uh, duck hunting gear and fishing gear you can put your hands on. That's where I bought my Benelli. So and we I'm sure they appreciated it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to come back to ducks, I promise you. But I want, I've been hearing this radio ad, and it's just like eating me alive. And it's talking about, you know, uh, all these selfish legislators, you know, in regards to closed party primaries and that they're just looking out for themselves and, but I got to tell you, you know, there's this one legislator that, uh, you know, I don't know, he has a keen ear for smoke alarms and things like that. And he actually raised an alarm that was uh, pretty dang valid, I thought, in regards to HB 17. And you got any idea who that might have been? Well, I'm sure they were uh, smarter than me, but uh, but I always make comments when comments are due. And uh the, the bill had a, I had a concern from the very beginning and I, I did address that with the author early on and I wanted to do it on the floor publicly because, 
you know, if, if I come to the floor and I start questioning a bill, something's up. And so the major issue I see, you know, I've been okay with open primaries, but I do understand, you know, the governor's long-term goal or ultimate goal to, um, you know, hopefully elect more conservatives long-term. And I think this process will vi eventually get there. But in the short term, this bill had some pretty bad problems. Uh, one of them is that if you were uh, being primaried, the, the current primary system has that primary happening in March. Well, I hate to tell folks, but we're typically in Baton Rouge, you know, so if you're in Shreveport or Monroe and having to drive the, the five or three hours to get down there, if you were being primaried, you'd be in the middle of legislative session. You couldn't get back and talk to your constituents. So that was a problem. Another major issue is, uh, unfortunately, we can't raise money uh, by while we're in a legislative, legislative session. So a, an incumbent would have a massive disability to raise money or even be in their own district to be able to go out and hustle up votes to, you know, when you got a heads up primary uh, Republican you're running against or Democrat, whatever party you're with. So those are two major issues I saw. There were some others, but these were the major issues that were going to create some really big problems, especially with some of the new conservative legislators we've worked really hard the last few years to, to put in office. All right. So, uh, Duke, do you want me to queue up the video? Or are we ready for that? Or No, I think I think okay. Mike covered it really well. I, I mean, mm -hmm. actually, you heard it from the horse's mouth. We had the uh, actually uh, when when you addressed. Uh, uh, oh, crap. Julie. Uh, yeah. Old, Julie. Old yeah, yeah. And, and she, she look, was, Julie's awesome. I love Julie. But and she knew that there were flaws with the bill and she said she would work on fixing them. But one of the things I found in this body, uh, you know, a lot of people promise to fix things in the future. And it's better to go in and fix it now, because if you have to wait, it may never happen. I know Julie would have done that, but I, I just I'm glad the amendments happened and the bill got back in a better posture just to, to impact what it did. Now, now, Julie, I, I got to tell you, like I watched a lot of these before and, and you might would disagree. And from your experience. Julie took a lot of questions, not just that day, but in the preceding days. And I almost felt sorry for her. But at the same time, I'll tell you, I, man, the respect level for her because she was taking it. That was that was what debate is all about, from my opinion. Is that the way you see it? Oh, absolutely. You know, from committee and then on the floor, uh, she handled the debate really well, very even keeled, handled the questions and even the inner individual questions that she handled off the floor. She was always respectful. She was always ready to try to find a solution. And whether it was now or in the future, she's always she's a great legislator to work with and uh, very, very uh, common sense and, and practical and easy to work with. Yeah, she she's always been sharp. I, I knew Julie before she became a legislator, and she was smart then. And uh, she she hadn't lost a, an edge at all. Now, there was this little bill called HB fourteen, and some people say that you know that was a, a superior bill to what ended up coming out of the Senate in regards to uh, the the redistricting of the congressional districts. What do you know about that? <laughs> well, it may have been a little bill that I authored on congressional redistricting. Now, you know, when it, the bill first dropped, I had dozens of members come to me and say, hey, is this the governor's bill? And I said, look, I didn't I didn't ask him, you know, to run this bill. I just wanted to come up with a common sense bill that met the judge's order, which, look, this is a leftist liberal judge that's advocating from the bench to, um, you know, put in a district that is highly gerrymandered or would potentially highly be gerrymandered. And so I tried to come up with the best potential data relevant bill that I could that didn't gerrymander a district. Uh, little did I know I was probably in the minority on uh, wanting that. Uh, you know, fast forward, I got the bill out of the committee, went to the floor. We were in a jammed up uh, timeline cycle. So the, the Senate bill was moving faster. There were several strategies around, you know, do we amend my bill on the floor to further reflect? the Senate bill. And just, again, there was a lot of back and forth, uh, but I, you know, essentially parked it on the floor because the Senate bill was moving. And, you know, after all the conversations, it, you know, it really feels like we were just putting together a gerrymandered bill so that there's a potential court case in the future that we can contest the bills. I mean, the, uh, the maps again, 
So that's kind of where we ended up. We've got a gerrymandered district that complies with Judge Foote's order, which is uh, unfortunate because it's gerrymandered. Now, when it goes to the Supreme Court one day, I'm sure they'll agree with us again, and they'll either go back to the existing maps we've got or we'll get to go back and draw something again. Well, so for those of us that are watching that are not sure how districts are, should be typically drawn, let me put it that way, and what gerrymandering is, maybe give everybody a brief explanation of how that process in theory should work and then maybe how it's actually working. So we, we work with three or four premises when we're trying to put together bills and maps that are favorable to current federal law. Uh, there's some things that we complied with the Voting Rights Act. We comply with and ensure that our our communities of interest are represented. And look, communities of interest is widely definable. That could be a group of farmers that all live in the same area or a group of uh, you know, specific population, or it could be any really category that, that are communities of interest. There's a lot of ways to define communities of interest. And then your areas have to be geographically concentric. So we're following all these three measures and, and many other things to try to make these things look reasonable on paper. So when you do this, the ultimate goal from, from uh, the leftist judges and others is to make sure that you can get a majority black district. That's what their end game is, is to get a majority black district. Uh, not a majority minority, but it's been very specific on the record that they said they want a majority, a, a second majority black district. So if you look at the data and then, you, of course, you spread out black population around Louisiana, it is not concentric. It is not geographically aligned where you can get a majority black district that doesn't look like some goofy structure on paper. When I drew the district, they're trying to get you a, a black voting age population of 53 or 54 percent so they can give their black candidate the best and highest chance of winning. Well, when you look at how it's dispersed all over Louisiana, uh, Congressman uh, Carter has a concentric district where communities of interest and geographic locations all tied in nicely. But the rest of the black population it's not like that. It's spread out all over. It's it's wedged into white and other minority populations. So when I com made my district map, it was compact and concentric, kind of to the left of where, where Congressman Carter's district is. But to get my numbers, I could never get over 49 point some odd percent. There was no way I could make the map where that black VMAC number would be 50, 51, 52, 53 percent, which is why you have to gerrymander to be able to do that, which again is why I think that maybe we'll end up in court again and those won't hold up to congressional, I'm sorry, to uh, Supreme Court uh, muster as they did in 20 years ago. Yeah, So, and for those of you that are watching, so a gerrymandered district is basically, if, if you think of the map <clears throat> and think of a district as being a relatively nice geographic shape, a gerrymandered district, keeping it very simple, it would be like, you know, taking the this district and stretching it around over here and looping around and including this city or this community to try to incorporate those people in that district. Is that a pretty good, easy an analogy of it? It is. And part of the rules we live by in redistricting say that you can't just uh, district based on race. So we have a, it's kind of an oxymoron that you're having to do it from a race-based right. perspective, but then you're not supposed to do it from a race-based perspective. However, this judge uh, has had given us these BMAP, BVAP numbers, these uh, black voting age population numbers that we had to meet, which again, were statistically impossible without gerrymandering. So this is why you see the map that we have today. We yeah. were kind of caught in a catch-22. And if we didn't pass a map this week and quickly, then she could redo the whole map and then totally goof up I mean, you might have a, you know, you, you talked about um, MJ or my good friend, uh, Congressman Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House. Uh, you might have a district where she draws him in a district geographically that's so gerrymandered and so race based that he couldn't win his own district, which could have huge national implications. And the same thing with Julia Letlow, who's on the Appropriations Committee, or even Steve Scalise, who's the majority leader for the Republican <clears throat> Party. So, 
The national implications of this could be quite dramatic. So we as a, uh, I guess a body um, did what we could to make sure the judge's orders were met and pass a district. Now, now Mike was advocating for, you know, more legal action. Was he or was he not? I saw his press release. All okay. I can tell you is he sent out a press release. <laughs> well, he is a con- he is a constitutional lawyer. <laughs> anyway, and I I agree, but I I don't like hostile judges uh, impl- implementing their will. You know, a one person uh, uh, legislature essentially implementing their will overnight, and so we tried to comply with the judge's orders, and we did that. But I think long term that order will have to be overturned because it is a, what I would perceive to be a gerrymandered district, but Hey, I've been wrong before. I'm a legislator and you know, we get things right at least a third of half of the time. Ah, That's a good percentage. Well, well, from the standpoint of the, you know, the, the two issues in the legislature, those were the ones I wanted to cover. And I mean, and now, you know, it's, Two more things. One, the ducks. We're getting to the ducks. Now, that's the most serious. <laughs> that's the real of... topic. That's, yeah, that the is, most important thing. Yeah. Hey, what's uh, what's Friday Ellis looking like over there? You know, he's doing a great job. He has made uh, significant strides over the last, and he's only been in office for three and a half years. So he's only been in there just a minute. And when he was sworn in, he literally won his race, and the next week they swore him into the office. So it was ready, fire, aim for him. But uh, he's made major, major improvements in our infrastructure in Monroe and this area. He's uh, done huge things as it relates to some new commerce. Uh, we have a new Amazon distribution center that'll that'll be breaking ground soon, and several other economic development projects. So, um, you know, with the the amount of work he's done, hundreds of plus millions of dollars in infrastructure, I'm, I'm hopeful he can win that race again, and I think he can. Uh, he's really endeared himself to all parts of Monroe, and um, I'm optimistic he'll be our mayor for the next four years. Interesting. Okay. Um, Duke, I am queuing up our next thing, uh, screenshot, so whenever you're ready, I'll switch screens. <laughs> Well, let's just go ahead and let's have at it. And we'll fire, we'll, fire in the hole. So oh, going on? there we what go. Is, what is going on right here? Well, you see, I have my perlis uh, crawfish shirt on underneath my, my hip waders. <laughs> and that is me out trying to find the wood duck, duck I've just shot at three times. And he is somewhere running away from me. And so uh, I'm on the assault. Well, I, well, I'm thinking you got your AirPods in. You're listening to a little bit of Inya. You got your shotgun in hand. And you're gonna that duck's gonna lose. I'm listening to Inya. So, <laughs> so look, I, I have I forgot my ear protection, and I reached in my. Uh oh, did we lose him? No, no, oh, no, oh, oh no. <laughs> Come back, Mike. <laughs> All right. He'll be back in in a second. He'll Te- be back in in a second. Technical difficulties. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I bet he got a phone call or something. May have. So, yeah, yeah the, he was uh, He was this afternoon, guys, before the start of the show. He was out in a little rice field getting him a, uh, a duck hunt in. And, uh, you know, Sportsman's Paradise. He was getting some. I, I, I'm i happy with it. You can go to the next picture. Yeah. And the res- result of his hunt i mean uh he uh they had a good he, evening i know those aren't all feathers. his those yeah. aren't all his I mean, <laughs> full disclosure I, to the wildlife and fisheries I, i'm thinking those are wood ducks and uh you know you, you can't shoot but about three per person and uh him and a couple of folks uh had him a pretty good little afternoon hunt so um all right, so let's see. The next one we want is what? Radio collared. Well, uh, well, we'll wait till okay. he gets back in because he may okay. not want to. <laughs> <laughs> he may not want to show that. One. <laughs> he, may, he may not want to talk about that. Uh, so okay, till he comes back in, why don't we jump to the next subject a little bit? Jump ahead, okay. and uh, which one? Got- where do we want to go to? First uh, here, here he is. Hold on just a second. So hold on, Mike. Let me get you in. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Can you hear us? Loud and clear. How about me? Oh, you're perfect again. Uh, do you got to have a phone call or something come in or just lose connection? Oh, 
The rain has got his interwebs wet. Oh, good grief. We're going to have to get some uh, internet connectivity over there in Monroe. No, my phone died, so I <laughs> jumped on my iPad. And I... All right. Gotcha. Well, it's, yeah, it's lagging you know, a little I, bit. I so. would have stayed off the show, but we actually had a pretty good hunt, and I had to come back and brag for just a minute. Um, I will tell you this. The wind was blowing. Are we are we on air? Can you hear yeah. me now? Yeah, yeah we can on. hear you. It's a, it's a little bit delayed, but we'll let you talk. So go ahead. Yeah. Okay, no, I was just saying that you know we had a good hunt, so I had to try to get back on air to at least you know. Sh- Te- technical difficulties, folks. A live show. I'm, I'm logging back in on another. Se- okay. All right, just a second, and I'll have you back in. Let's do this, do this. Are you back? We are back. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, that's that's coming in good now. All right. So, yeah, I just had to get back online with you guys because we actually had a pretty good hunt, and so uh, it was a fun day. It's my last day to get to duck hunt this year. A lot of wood ducks, uh, a lot of uh, mallards, so we didn't kill any mallards. We just killed wood bugs and teal, but they were there. Yeah. All right. So, so let, let's, let's turn this into a serious conversation. So how was your duck season sure. overall? Terrible. Absolutely terrible. We did not have good ducks until there was a hard freeze about 10 days ago. And after that, it was epic. Uh, every hunt we've gone on, we've seen, you know, thousands of birds, so if we could freeze Arkansas and North sometime in early or mid November, that would be perfect. So are, are you saying, all right, now you're a conservative Republican. Are you saying that climate change and global warming is a real thing? I'm saying that it's not cold enough in Arkansas and I'd like it to get cooler faster or delay our duck season to where we start our duck season in Louisiana about December 15th. And run till what about February? Oh, May, June, as long as we, we've got ducks. <laughs> as long as we got ducks, well, shoot them. <laughs> well, I think between December 25th and January 1 is when Missouri and those states kind of start slow at shutting their season down, I think. And I hear that a lot of people saying, well, we need to push the season back late. And I hear a lot of people say, well, it's because, you know, the, the, the food up there is rotting away and there's no longer any more food and their seasons are closing down. They're pulling the water off their ponds and now they're finally coming on down here to us. What do you think about that? I don't think that's it. I think they got cold weather. The ducks couldn't eat anymore, so they came south. All right, Rex, pull out the radio <laughs> collared mallards. All and, right. and look, I, I do agree oh. that the duck patterns are moving east, but I just know that it's cold up there and we got ducks. So cause and effect. All right. Well, uh, I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna challenge right, here, you here. Here we go. Radio collared mallards. Oh, All here right. they come. Now Trying you see that screenshot? In. Yep. That was two days after the freeze. And that's all the radio collared mallards, you know, two days after the freeze, after we were froze up solid down here, that that's where they were. Well, I told you we were killing wood ducks and teal by the thousands. Now all your, your radio trained mallards, I don't know where they are, but the, the teal and the wood ducks are here. Well, if, if, if they, oh, good. Okay. Okay. Well, well, let me, let me give you for another every slide. Hundred, for every hundred <laughs> teal and wood ducks we saw, we saw two mallards. So they weren't radio controlled. I hear you. All right. Well, let me, let me challenge you again. I'm going to give you another, in which you'll believe this one. Let me give you another, uh, uh, uh cut here that I got. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Now that's Louisiana. Can we throw in a like a E equals M C square and a pi and a root that we can do some division on? There will well, be well, a let, test after this. Well, let me let me just tell you 
this chart right here and the one that I have afterwards. Now, I didn't have all this ready for you. I already just had this, but you <laughs> showed me you were in this one. I didn't Nancy even know Pelosi took the speakership. Duck I didn't even went bad. I didn't even know you were a duck hunter. But but look here. This is a peer reviewed chart, you know, by Ph.D. Good up until this year. And that is Louisiana and the midwinter survey. And oh, it don't I look so hot for Louisiana. Tell me that, that the COVID vaccine was good for you. So I'm going to have to uh, question some credentials here, but you can keep going. <laughs> I'm just saying uh, that it seems to be there's something in the mix there. That's what you see what Louisiana historically was. And you see what we are now with mallards i mean and obviously somebody flipped the switch on global warming in 1999 it would seem but i don't want to take just one species because that would be cherry picking go to the next one rex oh lord here we go <laughs> gad look, at our, look at our gad walls that's a louisiana species right there so Same i gotta thing. kill gad walls they they flipped that switch in 1999 and you know the 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 phd looking at the numbers says oh there's something to this there it is right there in black and white i'm gonna go so, out on a limb and say you're about to say something next about ducks unlimited and a few other things absolutely not absolutely <laughs> not i'm i'm not throwing rocks at anybody but what I'm, i am saying and I'm okay if you throw rocks that you know if it's, if it's global warming <laughs> that you're blaming then okay i've got a few other things for that category well no i i'm i'm fixing to now show you a chart that i am gonna i am gonna lay the blame and uh go to the next one rex all right here we go right right there that one right there now what what you're looking at there is uh equip csp crp whip you know that's all your equip programs and funding levels you know, since 1995 to current day. And if you'll look, and you may already know the answer to this, I know the answer, but Louisiana and Arkansas, we're sitting around to the tune of, you know, 500 million. And all the states north of us have all been getting in the billions, billions. And, you know, somebody has to ask the question, why is it that Louisiana and Arkansas, why have we been getting screwed in all these other states we're getting millions and they're getting billions. And, you know, I think it's probably because a lot of those states have uh, dedicated funding to their wildlife and fisheries and to their their, their states and to this pro these programs. And, you know, here we are, Louisiana, we've been the biggest supporter of sending money to the breeding grounds up there. And, you know, what do we get in return? These other states aren't sending what we're sending, but yet they're sucking up, they're taking their money, putting it into their own state, and they're getting all of this matching money from the federal government, and we're not. We're we're helping prop so, them up. So the Oklahoma Wildlife and Fisheries budget is $78 million in its last fiscal year. Ours is in excess of $100 million, so that's not it. So we got to come up with something else. I, I think if they're if they're using some federal grant or matching scheme to help farmers keep crops in the field post harvest, uh, instead of not paying them to you know not do a crop, then that could be part of the problem. But again, I go back to cause and effect. It was really cold. We haven't had any ducks. Everything froze north, and then they showed up. I like that theory for now. Let's keep Arkansas frozen. Well, I, I wish that were the case, but if we have to have winters like we just had to ever have ducks in Louisiana again, then we're shit out of luck for the rest of duck hunting. I, duck hunting's dead. I, I hear I hear in Shreveport they turn turn the water off when uh, whenever it gets too cold. So that's that's kind of a rough a rough ride. I, I don't think that was by choice. <laughs> well. We got to do something about ducks and I, me and you will just have to uh, disagree. I don't think it's all about the cold. Uh, um, we have had you show me the wood duck stats and the teal stats. I just can't believe you. It just seems like uh, Fauci <laughs> well, math. Well, if you keep murdering all them <laughs> wood ducks in a rice field over there, I mean, hell, we ain't never going to have no wood ducks. 
<laughs> well, y'all, y'all brought up something earlier in the show, and I want to tell y'all that I've worked on this a little bit already. Uh, the the gentleman, the Middle Eastern gentleman, who's a, a terrorist and that's going to do something bad. You know, in in twenty twenty three, I ran a House concurrent resolution that requested the Governor's Office of Homeland Security Emergency Preparedness provide a monthly uh, joint report to the legislature on criminal activity, drug use, fentanyl deaths, illegal immigration statistics to Louisiana, and then other things dealing with customs, as well as anything that endangered specific threats to its citizenry. And, you know, they've started doing some of that, but we as legislators need to know more about these terroristic threats that are happening. It's becoming a national phenomenon. The Biden administration has been an absolute disaster for domestic security. Uh, Our people are in peril now, and we got to have as much data as we can to work with local and statewide law officials. So there's a lot more to be done here, and I'm going to be working with the the people and patriots that are worried about this. And um, we're going to we're going to work on addressing this and hopefully with the crime session that's coming up, we got a lot of work to do to take those um, criminals, those thugs, those robbers, those murderers, and put them under the prison forever versus letting them back out on the streets. Amen to that. Well, and maybe the ones that are coming across that border, we just need to ship them back wherever they came from. I'm, uh, you know, we just saw President Trump win the uh, New Hampshire primary, and he's he's echoed similar. Uh, policy positions, and I'm hopeful that that he is uh, victorious, and we can put him back in to to make some of those policy decisions a reality. You got that right, brother. Well, I'm not going to beat you up on ducks no more. But you started it with all them wood ducks rubbing it in <laughs> our noses. <laughs> no wood duck stats. Hey. No reality. I can see the wood duck stats. I just want to know what reality Duke is in when he thinks somebody from Monroe doesn't like to duck hunt or from the Monroe area doesn't like to duck hunt. Well, I did have a Thomas a Thomas Presley hairdo, so I could understand the mistake of underthinking that I didn't duck hunt. But uh, I can pick on him now because he's a senator. But he's a good buddy, and um, I even texted him from the field today to brag, and, and he said, you know, you're wearing a polo shirt. Uh, duck hunting, I'm proud of you, and I, I agreed. So, hey, it's, good it's the it's the new age duck hunting. What can we say? <laughs> oh, he's one of them pump seven guys, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I just win the cockroach award tonight. I got defeated by Raymond Cruz the last time I was on your show, but uh, but I've tried to give it my all tonight, and you've gotten personal pictures and stories now, and so I'll have plenty of uh, stuff for the Beast and the Guardian whenever they reach out. Yeah, we'll put you in the running for Cockroach of the Week. Everybody, you've heard that, so y'all get your votes ready. Put Mike's name down. He is one of the applicants for Cockroach of the Week. Yeah, absolutely. An honor that I would carry with me from this day forward. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> right. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Y'all too. See ya. All right, Mr. Lauer. So, uh, <laughs> so let me let me find the comment here. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Hold on just a second because uh, Andy Monica asked us. Oh, is this the Outdoor Channel? I told him we were slowly morphing into the Outdoor News. It's a slow and gradual thing. We we don't want to scare everybody off and do it all at once. There, Andy. All right, Ferris. I'm gonna have to have some more conversations with him about ducks before you can go nominating to vote for him for anything. Now, I mean, I just gotta, I gotta hold the line here on the ducks. I mean, he's over there murdering all the wood ducks and won't acknowledge <laughs> it, that he's for global warming or against it. I was trying to get him to say, "Hey, I'm with Biden and them." So I refresh my memory because it's been a long time since I pulled the trigger on any ducks. But aren't most wood ducks resident ducks or do they actually migrate that much? Uh, there's a lot of them that do migrate, um, but but they don't have as wide a range as the mallards and all that, right? As wide of a range. Well, I mean, they're all they're freaking all. No, over. I mean they're yeah they're distributed all over, but I'm talking about as far as their migratory patterns. Yeah, that no, they don't migrate like um, mallards and gadwalls and pintails, Canada geese you know, uh, Arctic geese, they don't migrate to, and so there's going to be a lot of waterfowl people out there 
some of them are going to cringe and there's two uh-huh. different there's two different groups to their ancestral wintering grounds <laughs> ancestral wintering grounds and and for some waterfowl people that don't waterfowl hunt they're like what in the heck are these people talking about and the ones that don't agree with me they're, they're taking their fingernails and they're like scraping them on the chalkboard right now listening mm. to me say that <laughs> all right so uh we'll be talking some more about hunting and fishing but on another episode i can back everything up i'm saying statistically and historically you have the numbers you have the math the math doesn't lie I, and look, look it does it doesn't lie there's something going on whether well, uh, well i don't want to get too far off on that tangent we got a bunch of stuff to talk about we'll, well save that for another show yeah, I look. I like Mike. I don't want. I, I can't make it too personal. I got to be careful here, or whatever. But it's I not, disagree. It's not, I respectfully disagree with my buddy Mike. Yeah, it's not his fault the ducks aren't showing up. I mean, it, he would love for the ducks to show up and go out there in his sneakers and polo shirt and you know, and his iPods, yeah, and his Air, yeah. AirPods. You know, listening <laughs> to Enya. I mean, he's got. He's, oh, he, he's a good guy though. So, all right. I bet Which, he throws a little enigma in there too. He probably does. All right. So what do we want to talk about next? Uh, do we want to do the first church update? And folks, we're going to get into the Charter Commission meeting. And let me also set this up a little bit before we get to it. Our good friend Wes Marriott from Sobo Live did video the meeting. And so he was kind enough to share that out. I did a little audio magic and boosted the audio. And we've transcribed the whole meeting now. So we're going to talk about that in just a, a little bit once we get to it. So what do we want to talk about next? Duke, you want to hit first church? <laughs> yeah. We want let's to talk to about first. MJ. Let's no, we already talked about MJ. He's old. News. Okay. Let's get, let's get first church out of the way. All right. So let me do share screenshots here. Let me get so, uh, duck numbers out of the way. Yeah. All so right. in the past, you know, there's been a lot, I mean, we did a bunch of shows. There was oh, yeah. a lot of drama with First Church, and and they've had this big kerfuffle. And you've had one faction suing, you know, uh, Jerkovich and the church and all that, and it's been winding its way through the court system. Okay. Went to district court, then a part of it went to uh, the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. Another part of the case was waiting on. Uh, in the district court was waiting on the opinion of the second circuit before they ruled. Well, second circuit ruled then the district court, as I understand it was able to rule on that piece of it. And so then it all went back to the second circuit. Second circuit upheld the district court on Mm -hmm. all of it. Well, then it got appealed to the Louisiana Supreme court and the Louisiana Supreme court upheld that. And so <clears throat> this was sent to us anonymously. So mm-hmm. as of, and this was an update apparently from, I, I mean, the pastor that's got to be Brad Jerkovich to the members of First Church. All right. You want me to read it off? Get get with it. Now, I can't do my whiny Brad Jerkovich voice, but I'll do my best here. Anyway, and for those of you listening to the podcast, this is like Duke said, it was sent to us appears to be an email from the pastor sent uh, sent to us anonymously. So here it goes. This is the pastor's legal update, January the 21st of 2024. Uh, I wanted to give you a brief update to a challenge that our church body has been dealing with since a couple of years ago when a small group of discu- disgruntled former members filed lawsuits against First Baptist Church of Bossier. The plaintiffs have requested a judgment nullifying the amended Articles of Incorporation adopted by the church in 2014. They wanted to take control of this church body. Through two amendments of their lawsuit, these former members have even asked the court to remove me, Eddie, Laureen, and our entire leadership team. The plaintiff's claim against our Articles of Incorporation was dismissed by the District Court in June of 2022. The Louisiana Second Circuit Court of Appeal subsequently affirmed the dismissal. The plaintiffs then asked the Louisiana Supreme Court to review the dismissal, a request that we opposed. I am happy to report today that we have received notice this week that the Louisiana Supreme Court denied the plaintiff's request. This means that all claims against the church have been dismissed and will stay dismissed 
It also means that this group of plaintiffs can no longer pursue any other claims against our church. Unfortunately, this is not the end of our legal battle. Because these plaintiffs have amended their lawsuit twice now to add me, Eddie, Loreen, and the six members of our leadership team as additional defendants, we have to still address that, and we will. Several motions seeking dismissal of this claim are scheduled for hearing on February the 15th of 2024. Well, let me make sure I'm still alive because it looks like we lost Duke. Okay, there's Duke. All right, so coming back to it, um, <laughs> in the face of these unbiblical... <laughs> Now I can't talk because I was just thinking it's odd that, I mean, he must have been <laughs> praying really hard to cut your stream off in the middle of reading this. All right. Sorry, folks. Here You're we doing so good. Uh, I know. I was, do I was doing so good. Okay. In the face of these unbiblical and divisive actions against our church, God himself has graciously sustained, strengthened, and defended our ministry. He has given our ministry victory on multiple fronts. We believe he will not only see us through this remaining challenge, but God himself will use our church in even greater ways in the coming years. I want to express my thanks to our entire church body for your faith and courage and biblical conviction. You are an incredible testimony to this city and region and beyond. I also want to say a special thanks to Eddie, my assistant Loreen, and our, and our leadership team. They are warriors. They love Jesus love this church, and they will not compromise the word of God as given to me himself. They have never wavered. Pray for them, and let's continue to stand faithfully for the Lord, and while we still have time, let's point people to Jesus alone. There you go, dude. Well, <clears throat> look. I'm I'll sure I'll get struck by lightning any minute now, so, you know. Well, I'm going to go to this. That. I still go back to, and in my humble opinion, both parties, both sides of this equation brought this church to where all of this is today, regardless of who wins or who doesn't win. Okay. I mean, when you start using the church for politics, this is what you get. And yeah. there's no denying that first church was the hotbed of the politics in Bossier Parish. Yeah. It was it. it. To remind everybody, that's really the only reason we're talking about First Church is it was basically a political playground. That, yeah, that was it. I mean, and and it. I, I remember a conversation I said, you know, you build this big massive church and you're building a fort and you're building a fort and a castle with walls to keep people out. You know, right. and, and it's supposed to be the opposite. You're supposed to build a church to bring people in, not keep people out. But it yeah. it served as the opposite. It, that's my opinion, and and a lot of people would disagree with me. And well, look, the, that's the, fine. Again, the math doesn't lie, and the numbers of of people that left it, and not that you know, having a, a successful church and successful being being defined to me as bringing people closer to God and bringing people to Jesus, but as far as the numbers go, there's no denying that just like the Ducks, you know, leaving Louisiana, folks left First Church. Now, whether they got kicked out, whether they left of their own volition, I, you know, there's no denying the numbers. The math don't lie. Now, maybe they're well, building it back up. I don't know. Full disclosure. Well, I hadn't set foot in First Church well, in a long, long time. Well, maybe, the, I mean, maybe the crossroads of politics finally met i mean there there's an argument to be made that maybe jerkovich's politics were too conservative for the people that were there maybe, maybe so. he wasn't conservative enough but either way the politics got crossed and it destroyed the church and i mean with all due respect to one of our commenters in there they said that it wasn't that way before jerk came i i beg to differ i, I don't think that that that's completely accurate because I know of instances of politics that took place over there before Jerkovich ever came around. Now, did once jerk come, did it, did it go to another level? Yeah, I think it did. I mean, we've shared on this show a picture of, uh, Jerkovich in the room entertaining 
Mike Johnson, Richard Ray, Alan Seaball, Bill Cassidy, David Vitter. I think even Ryan Gaddy was in that room. Uh, I mean. Oh, yeah. It's a who's who of politicians that have been through that church. And not that there's anything wrong with, you know, obviously we expect our politicians to attend church services, but it's the way that those politicians were used. I mean, we shared the clip of, let's see, who was it? Uh, Was it Lowell Walker and David Montgomery? I mean, he may as well have had a political rally letting them speak. And as the rumor goes, denied a certain other candidate the ability to speak, or at least that candidate wasn't allowed to. Uh, So, I don't know. It's a hot mess over there. Either way, in... in... Boy, my wife. (laughs) Yeah, I see that comment. (laughs) You're going to have to block her and cut her her off. Mm. Anyway... Um, All right. Well, let me just say this. For those of you that maybe it's your first time listening or hearing us talk about First Church, for reference, if you want to go back and look at show 56 that we did and show 69, you can go scroll through the Facebook stuff, or to me, it's easier to find it on YouTube. We've got it listed under the YouTube videos. Um, You can go back and review those shows and, and get a little more context into what we're talking about. So I'm just curious. Yes, sir. Are you a WASP member? Well, I have to say, until this afternoon and this evening, I, I honestly didn't even know what WASP is. I mean, do you, do it, you think Mike Eccles is a WASP member? I don't know. We should have asked him. We forgot to ask him. Hmm. We did forget to ask him. Yeah. Is anybody else out there a WASP? Remember WASP? Let me put that in the comments so y'all will be able to see it. I guess I need yeah, to put periods. Let's see. I mean, there, there's a there's like 125 or six of y'all out there watching. I mean, we're just wondering how many of y'all are members of WASP. Yeah, we really want to know. We'll give and, y'all a minute. We'll give you a minute to answer in the comments. We, I mean, I'm just curious how many of y'all are members of WASP. Yeah, and even more specifically, um. Those of you that are watching that might have been in, at the Charter Commission meeting, are you members of WASP? And trust me, I, this will all make sense here in a little bit, folks. I, I'm thinking there was definitely WASP members at the Charter meeting. Uh, no doubt about it. <laughs> I don't have any question in my mind. I, th- I think rather than, rather than let y'all know what the acronym stands for, if you're not going to Google it, Oh, Michael Ferris has already beat us to it. <laughs> <laughs> and them fingers was working overtime. Wait, boy. wait a minute. Your wife's at it again. I got to put hers up here first. Uh, women <laughs> against stupid people. <laughs> She's on a roll tonight. She um, is. My goodness. What has gotten into her? Hey, yeah, Paul, Paul Johnson's already. <laughs> they've been Googling and looking things up. Okay, so white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. And uh, let's give a little credit here to Paul Johnson. Okay. <laughs> Shelly Renee Polky, she got it as well. Okay. So. We just got to go to the video. Yeah. Show, we, there, there's, it was one of the more comical highlights of the Charter Commission meeting. So re- refresh my memory, dude, because I've slept since last week. Did I give an update on the Charter Commission meeting or kind of just a brief summary of it? I think I did. I, I, I think you said that we were going to cover it the next meeting, right. but, and you yeah. maybe said just a little bit about it. Yeah, I, th- I think I gave some highlights about it. Okay, so let me get everything queued up because, of course, I'm naturally not ready. So hold on just a second. Let me well, find this. so a lot of you know the, the Bossier City Council, they convened a charter commission. And why did they convene a charter commission? They convened a charter commission because some unruly citizens in Bossier decided to exercise the privileges that are allowed to them in the charter as it exists in Bossier City. And the thing they tried to seek to do, you all know, is term limits upon all of them, to which they all said, oh, heck no, we're not going to let those measly citizens of Bossier City dictate to us or make the rules or laws of Bossier City. We'll show them, we'll fight them in court. And then, oh, G. Willikers, we'll convene a charter commission and we'll make our own rules. Yeah, yeah, 
Back with you pesky citizens. They've Shame only had on 20, y'all. They've only had 20 something years to do this, but you know, it took all, all of us to motivate them to do it. Right. Okay. So let me get, let's see, let me get my screen positioned here because for some reason I wasn't ready with the main thing we're kind of talking about tonight here. So this was the charter commission meeting and you know, they had, they held it during the ice storm naturally, or, you know, on a day when the, um, let me get it back on the screen on a day when, uh, you know, the, uh, state police and all that were recommending to everybody to stay home. And some reason I can't seem to get my screen to play nicely here. So hold on folks, technical difficulties again. Uh, but they went ahead and had the charter commission meeting anyway, during or, or after, I'm sorry, after the city council meeting, which they also held last Tuesday, which was right in the middle of the ice storm. And, you know, anyway, so they did. Now, fortunately, uh, they were supposed to stream this, but they didn't. And I actually had my iPad and my tripod in my truck, and I was just going to record it and then publish it later. Uh, But I thought, no, they're going to stream it. I left it out there. And then by the time we got into the meeting and I realized that they weren't going to stream it, I wasn't leaving the meeting to walk out there and get my iPad and all that in the ice. So I recorded the audio, but Wes Marriott from Sobo Live grabbed his uh, phone or whatever, and we got video of this, with, and I boosted the audio. So we actually have a pretty good coverage of this meeting. All right. So here we go. Um, let me see if I can get my screen tweaked just a little bit. I can't make it seem to play nicely like I want to for some reason. All right. So uh, let me scroll. Da, 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 da. Let's see here. All right. Um, why? Let's see. Well, this is. Um, what are you looking for? Yeah, I'm looking for. Uh, I thought I had my timestamps before this. Uh, uh, all right, here we go. So, well. All right, hold on, let me hit play. Uh, Our order that the council uses, and I will be glad to hand over these secretary duties to someone once you select one. Uh, All right, so this is a little, some of this is boring. We're literally not going to go through every one of these timestamps, but this is Richard Ray, and at the very first meeting, of course, they hadn't selected a chair or vice chair or secretary or anything like that. So he was kind of acting as a secretary and maybe moderator or whatever uh, until they actually elected to do this. So he's kind of explaining the rules. uh, And he mentioned that they should follow the Bossier City Council's rules of decorum. Well, of course, (laughs) Wes Marriott took issue with that. Now, he's holding his phone, so that's why it's upside down. The important part is listen to the audio. Marriott, 4330 Panther Drive, Sobo Live. Uh, just very quickly and very briefly, I'd like to introduce myself and tell you that I appreciate the work that you're doing. Before you vote on the agenda, you've received some advice from uh, Bossier City Assistant City Attorney Richard Ray to adopt the rules of decorum that are currently in place by the Bossier City Council. I would caution that those rules are currently the uh, topic of a federal lawsuit, citing that those rules are unconstitutional. So I would hazard and I would caution this body not to adopt those rules, but to adopt the general rules of decorum that are approved by the courts of many jurisdictions throughout the United States, but not specifically some of the unconstitutional rules that are approved currently by the Bossier City Council. All right. So I'll skip the rest of it. Wes, you did a great job, by the way, but I'll save everybody from hearing it. You know, basically Wes was reminding him, wait a minute, um, you know, your rules of decorum for the city council are part of a federal lawsuit. And then Colonel, then Colonel Crockett came up and had his comments on the agenda. So we'll listen to a minute of that, and then we'll do some commentary. Crockett, six five three, Dumain Drive, Motor City, Louisiana. Now I am also excited. I've read your resumes that were provided by the city, and of course, y'all are esteemed. You know, some of you people uh, I know, some I don't. But I'm very proud that y'all are doing this. I feel like it's really important. I believe also. That, uh, is it you that have a master's in public administration? Yes, excellent. Yeah, Listen, I do too. The colonel there buttering him up. Of government, basically, we have 
Uh, they call it a strong mayor government, but they actually they keep taking power member. away from the mayor. I think those are issues that need to be addressed by this group. I'm going to stop it for a second. So, Colonel Crockett, if you're watching, and Wes, you were at the meeting too. Are you a WASP member? We need to know. Oh, he's got WASP written all over him. He's probably got the. He's probably a card carrying member, and we just didn't know it. All right. Probably so. Uh, whether you stick with a mayor led or a president council led with a um, city manager or something like that, that ought to be considered. <laughs> Uh, my recommendation is that you do some field trips and things like that. Sugarland, Texas is one of the high, highest uh, recommended city council, functioning city councils in the country. I think it's gained a lot of recognition. There are a lot of things like that. I hope you, um, I mean, we'll, we'll participate. I think you know the people that are standing up here a little bit. But, uh, but I think there are a lot of things like that that you can do to improve the council. But I think what to gain the... Moser City has such a great reputation, but I think a lot of it, a lot of the things that have heard, heard lately is that the public doesn't participate. Uh, it does a great job with uh, publishing these minutes and things like that, but, now, but I do believe that they're losing reputation because they don't compete contracts and things like that. So those kinds of things can be improved also. A more restrictive... Oh, uh, a more conservative government where the public feels that they have confidence that the money is being spent wisely because you do compete contracts. Those are things that need to be put in the charter. The term limits issue is something, of course, we want to see that's done really well also. But obviously, yeah, I don't think we'll ever forget the uh, date of birth and from 18-3. But I do believe that... Um, you know, we're going to continue to pursue that. And I think that if you, if you read about the Boyas Parish, that uh, it looks like they're going to give in on that, right. that police jury to have term limits so, discussions. Or maybe he'll get up here in a second. Let me, Colonel, I got to ask you, since you just logged in, you may not have seen the message yet. We have to know, are you a WASP member, WASP member in good standing? We need to know. All right. So, so after the Colonel speaking, I mean, that obviously, um, I don't know. It took a toll, I guess. Well, it did. So, of course, Richard Ray's got his little comments. So, I think he talks right after this. So, I'll go ahead and play it for a few minutes. And on the approval agenda, are there any comments yeah. from the commission? I would think, Robert, if, we, if it's appropriate that we just, for our own well-being, that we just follow General Robert Sewell's order. If that's acceptable to the commission as we go through, I mean, I don't think we have to have special um, operational issues for us as a commission, um, and unless somebody is just opposed to that. So is there well, a time well, limit for people who comment? Can we? Wait, did you hear that, Duke? Wait a minute, what? <laughs> Your favorite person speaks. What? It, okay, did Let's I hear go. that correctly? Let's go back. <laughs> Folks, did y'all hear that? Listen closely. This is none other than the infamous Juliana Parks, who may be in the running for our Cockroach of the Week, the first one we've done in a long time. Uh, so listen up again. Here you go, Duke. Is there well, a time well, limit for people who comment? Can we? Can we? Is there a time limit for people who comment? She's right out of the gate. Well, Notice she did that after the colonel was up there. He gets picked on all the time. So... The first thing in in trying to redo the rules to better represent the people is you're worried about limiting comments. Yeah, they <laughs> don't elect a speaker, don't uh, you know, or, or chairperson, don't elect a vice chairperson, don't elect a a secretary, or anything like that. Right out of the gate, we want to limit the public. Good job, Juliana. Oh, well, and she has some other I, choice quotes in this meeting too. I I. I, I don't know what to I, I I'm speechless. I'm speechless. <laughs> Christopher I'm James Norris speechless. Christopher James Norris says, why is she sitting in the middle chair as the leader? She wants to be the leader. Well, I don't know. She kind of uh, you'll see here in a minute. It, it'll well, kind is of the explain police jury itself. running Bozier City or is Bozier City running Bozier City? I I the Dee police Dee jury's run in Bozier City. Dee Dee White Clark says so. She's there and the police jury, and she's counsel for the sheriff's department, and she's on the library board, and I don't know what all else. 
So there, she's a busy girl. No conflicts anywhere. It's, <laughs> no, it's not all on a clean. I mean, look, we're still waiting. Patrick Jackson on that AG's opinion, right? Right. Okay. So <laughs> your wife's on a roll. Why is she there? Can't the government not work without her? No, they have to have her expert legal opinion. Everyone well, I know. think I think they actually said that though, right? Didn't they say? Oh that? yeah, they they did. Preston buttered her up pretty good. So we, we'll get to I that. We, All right. We've got that video. They said that only they could do it. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Just a, just a moment because, because we're only vote, we're only discussing the agenda itself. Right. And so, yeah. yeah, we're only doing yeah. the agenda. We'll get to limiting the public's rights later. Yeah, we, we're not going there yet. <laughs> yeah, this is crazy. Uh, now, I have to say, overall, the meeting you know, as they kind of got into it, I was very enthused about the meeting and, and had a good feeling about it. So I, I don't want y'all to think that this was just such a terrible meeting. It just started off with Juliana running off at her mouth. All right, here we go. Yes, we have to follow Robert's rules as any meeting would. Well, all right, let me correct you, Richard Ray. You Wait don't a minute. Have, you don't legally have to follow Robert's rules of order. They, you can adopt any rules you want. There's even a more current set of rules than Robert's rules that are based on Robert's rules. But Anyway, minor point. I'm just stating that if there are specific rules or bylaws that will be adopted later, should you wish to do so, okay. that will be for you in the future. Today, I'm just trying to get through this initial agenda. So we're, we're on the <laughs> he's, item. He's just trying to get through the meeting, people. the agenda. All right. We have a motion on the table. Yeah, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. All right. The uh, agenda is approved as published. Moving into new business, um, introduction of members and additional proposed procedures. Uh, I guess I'll start with my introduction and we can just kind of move around the dais from me. All right. It's not a Fast forward through all this. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I'll save you all of having to listen to Richard Ray any more than we have to, but I do want to, because they do their little intros and all that. And so... I will do this. Let me let me get this little deal up here just so y'all know. And, and I know the video is a little small, folks. Again, I'm going to publish the whole video with the uh, closed captioning and all that built into the video. As a matter of fact, it's set to automatically release at 930 on Facebook. But just so you know, of course, that's Richard Ray. Uh, he would be to our far right over there. Um, that is Sandra Moorhart. Uh, I believe she's the wife of Travis Moorhart, famed CPA and auditor extraordinaire for most of the government entities. That is David uh, Johnson, who probably is watching the show tonight, I would imagine. Um, great guy, small business owner. Yeah, great guy, great friend of the show. This is Lee Jeter here. He is the... Uh, well, I better not say that. We might get in trouble. He's a good friend of mine. He's a good guy, Lee Jeter. Uh, of course, there is Shane Cheatham, former th uh, former amigo of the Three Amigos fame, also former Bozier Parish School Board member, and whatever else he's done. Uh, oh, he was on the pack too till he, well, till he got tired of the pack. All right, and of course, Juliana Parks, Duke's favorite person. Now let's listen. Because <laughs> we want to hear this one, trust me. Let's listen to Juliana's intro because she kind of threw a little shade our way. Oh, really? You don't yeah. know? Parks. Yeah. And, um, and I'm an attorney. I've been practicing for um, since 2006, whatever that math is, about 18 years. Um, and the the law that I practice deals with. Um, government entities and that sort of thing. So I can bring that experience um, to this position. I do live in Bossier City, obviously, to be chosen. And um, I moved to Bossier City when I left law school. Before that, I lived in Houghton um, when I graduated from high school there. I married a guy from Airline, which is anyway. So now we live. Now we live in Bossier City. I have two boys. One goes to Airline, and one goes to Cope. Um, and I look forward to, to serving on this committee. Um, I think that something that I bring to the table is that I can 
um, ask the, the tough questions and make sure that we're thinking critically about this stuff. Um, one of the biggest things I've learned Listen. since being elected to the police jury is that um, right just here. because somebody's the loudest doesn't mean they're necessarily the majority. And so I'd like to be careful that when we say we're speaking for the people of Bossier that we really are speaking for the majority of the people of Bossier and not just those that tend to be the loudest. And so I... I now, I got to say, I was sitting in that meeting and ding, I got a text message from a c city councilman. <laughs> it was like, I think she was talking about y'all. What do you have to <laughs> well, say to that, Mr. Lowry? Are we the loudest? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. You might be a little vain that she's... Uh thinking it's us i i don't guess she i mean I, look she could be talking about sobo live yeah she could be she could be talking they're, about wes i mean he pretty, does get pretty loud and boisterous and, and pretty, what so does the colonel he's boisterous she, too she's probably talking about shane she, well, she talking about us maybe so but let me remind you juliana in case you were referring to us that we get more views on our show within 48 hours than the number of constituents who actually voted for you. So I'm going to say that we represent more people around Bozier, or at least our views, than you do, Juliana. So there's that. All right. So uh, let's skip over to Preston Friedley, because he ended up being uh, selected as the chair. So let's get to know Preston in just a minute. I just wanted to point out, did mm -hmm. I see three WASP members, potentially six? I just wanted to make that note. <laughs> well, don't forget um, Amanda Nottingham sitting over here to the left, but she can't. Well, I guess she could be a WASP member. Well, that but would she's be three, she, potentially she's seven. Sitting, yeah, she's sitting over there off screen to stage left. All right. Uh, so this is Preston Friedley right here, and that's important because he ends up being selected as a chair. So let's listen to Preston's intro. Um, I'm Preston Friedley. I've uh, probably been here as long as anybody else. I've been in Bossier. My father came here as military, so I moved here in 1970. Um, some of you know, uh, for 20 years, I was the president and the CEO of the Tourist Commission. Uh, after that, I uh, owned uh, the UPS stores here in town uh, up until I sold them and retired. Um, I do uh, appreciate, yes, I do have a master's degree in public administration, undergraduate degree in government. Um, I just hope that, as one of my professors used to tell me, I hope that we're listeners. Uh, if we don't get any further than just having nothing but public hearings and public input, uh, in this process, because I think all of us come in with a little bit of um, a knowledge of how we'd like to see government operate, uh, but I hope that we can really open the door uh, so that there's an obvious transparency in the operation of this commission, and that we can make sure that through public hearings and public input, everybody has an opportunity to voice what they'd like to see happen here uh, in the future for Bossier. So thank you. All right, so that was Preston Friedley's uh, little introduction. And to answer the question that Holly asked in the comments, yes, Richard Ray did ask them to do some short intros. So they're, they're not just, you know, throwing this out there. Okay, uh, then moving along, this was Vicki Whitman uh, as well. And I think she's the wife of the uh, city marshal. Um, city marshal I, Jim Whitman, correct. Yeah, I think so. And then the next one is Lisa Wilhite. Now, I may be wrong, Duke, because she she said in her intro that she was a transplant from South Louisiana that came up here in the late 90s. So I don't know if she's related to the Wilhite um, that was appointed to the Cypress District or maybe married into the family. Maybe not. She may be, Maybe it's a different set of Wilhites. I, I'm not really positive on that yet. And then Amanda Nottingham, of course, is off camera. I think Wes did swing over towards her, but Amanda and Richard Ray are non-voting members of the commission. So basically, I guess, what do you call it? Ex officio members or whatever. Well, if I want to make another point for everybody watching here, and if you put your little, start your little pointer to the far left and work across the room. Okay. So 
uh, if this lady, no, but yeah, right there. If this lady is the wife of that uh, Wilhite person who is now at the Cypress District, correct? Okay, so there's that point. Move to Vicky. Vicky and her husband are known to have done the fish fries out at the uh, out at the Cypress District and have been a fixture kind of out there at the Cypress District. I like Vicky, and keep going. Uh, Juliana. You know, during she has been a fixture out at the Cypress District, you know, in the role as a police juror. And while running for the police jury, she spent a lot of time out there. So she's got a connection to the Cypress District. Shane, no connection, no connection, no connection. Bam. Didn't Moreheart, didn't he do the books out at the Cypress District? Yeah, but now let me defend Moreheart a little bit because... It's been a while, but he had one of the more famous quotes that I caught on video. And basically it was, you know, you got he, the, who is the CPA and auditor for, um, for the Cypress district, warn them about telling the banks, you know, they're going to do one thing and they're going to do one thing. And then they do a completely another thing. Well, since that time. Uh, they've pretty much, they won't let him speak to the public. They, they have him when he's there addressing the Cypress district, they will not let him take questions. He must address the Cypress district commissioners only, and then he has to leave. Well, I so. just going to make the point that if, if that's correct, that's four of, of the members of this board that have a connection out there. What are you the think chances? That's all, yeah. You think that's all related or is it just coincidence, dude? Just it's a it's a mighty interesting coincidence, you know. I see those things. I don't know why I see those things, but it just it it appears before me. But anyway, let's keep going. Okay, so uh, let's let's uh, go to the discussion on the nominating of the chair. We'll listen to that in a minute. We may not go through the whole thing because they nominated Preston Friedley and selected him as the chair. Is there a motion to nominate someone? And we'll start with chair. Is there a is there a motion to nominate anyone as chair, or is there a motion? Uh, is this something that the commission wants to handle today, or do you want to handle it at a future meeting? Um, I just, just as I stated earlier, this agenda. All right, I'm going to stop it right there because I actually don't select the chair for a few minutes, so we'll get back to more nominations on that. I want to skip ahead about a minute or so because there's some discussion of employees on the clock and streaming and the meeting times. And so this is how um, that started. So here we go. The only thing that I would say is that it's 449 and there are issues with, there are, I'm a salaried employee. I'm here as long as you need me to be. But there are, there are, oh, there are such dedication, that Richard. On the clock that will be after five o'clock. Oh, you mean he don't, work, he don't work for Manshack? Well, he's got to work a lot of overtime to figure out how to get around those BS open meetings laws, right, Richard? Isn't yeah, but that what your but, boss said. Yeah, but Richard, just because you're a salaried employee doesn't mean you can't file for overtime, right? You need right. to go talk to Ben. Ben, yeah. and you need to go talk to Ben, Richard. Yeah, yeah, he's an expert at that. All I, right, here we I, go. Manchak's got that figured out. And so, I, I would my suggestion if I may respectfully would be that if that's something that you need to do at a future meeting, then that may be better than taking a recess. Um, and I would also want to uh, explain to the group, if you will, that All right, listen this closely. is a public body and you would be bound, in my opinion, by open meetings laws. And so uh, you wouldn't be able to... Now, y'all heard that. I mean, of course, yeah, it is an open meeting and, and it is a, an appointed public body a bunch of bureaucrats technically no offense guys because most of you on the on the charter commission i like but uh you heard him say it right there they're basically going to treat these as open meetings which also means public information requests and all that and if you want to attend go right ahead um and if you want to video it or record the audio go right ahead all right and I want to say this, I'm glad to see that we've got over 100 people on all the platforms that are paying attention to this, because this is very important. This is the Charter Commission. This has to deal and is related directly to the term limits uh, petition and potentially could change the course of city governance. So 
you know, if you get, if you know some people that might want to pay attention to this, now's the time to tag them into the show as well. All right. Let's see here. Uh, let's get a couple of comments in. Weston says, Ms. Morehart seemed very interested in working hard and taking the role serious. Yeah, I would agree with that. That's kind of my take on it. All right, here we go. To meet outside of a meeting with a, with a quorum, or it, would, it could be considered to be a violation of the meetings laws. So, um, either... Richard would know. <laughs> he's, to a, to a, he's an to expert on how to get around and, that. And have that as a discussion item or do it here rather than taking a recess, I think would be a more appropriate way to do it, Mr. Jeter. Yeah, so Lee Jeter had asked about taking a recess so they could kind of mingle and get to know each other, and Richard Ray is trying to shoot that down. Of course, they were against the clock, too, because, you know, it was after the uh, city council Snow- meeting, which went long. And Snowmageddon. And Snowmageddon and ice, you know, had to go put our ice chains on the tires and all that. So, All right, uh, I'll save us uh, some of this. So there was some discussion from David Johnson about uh, Preston, Shane, or Lee Jeter being the chair. But I want to skip ahead to poor Juliana. Uh, she nominates Vicki Whitman for the chair, and Vicki promptly declines. So hold on a second. I would like to put Vicki Whitman up to be the chair. Um willing to do that. You know, I don't know if I would feel comfortable doing that right now, Juliana. I'll be honest with you. I appreciate your voting confidence, but I'm new to this. So to take a leadership role in it, I would be a little bit hesitant. Um, <laughs> but I do appreciate your voting confidence. <laughs> Got it. All right. So, but I, I would like to right, off, would like to, right uh, off the bat, uh, her so, nominee know, gets shot down. And, of course, she's wanting to restrict commentary from the public. Way to go, Juliana. Uh, Let's see. Um, Shane, I'm going to skip some of this. Again, we're going to post the whole video. It's set to auto post here in about an hour. Uh, Shane discussed, uh, you know, the reason for nominating the chair today or or that particular day because they needed to do things like setting the agenda and uh, for the next meeting and all that sort of thing. Um. But Preston, he was politicking right off the bat. So here we go. Chair will be also assigning all the uh, assistant work to be done within the committee. So is that a threat? <laughs> so I, I, I'm willing to accept working with as the chair as long as somebody with some legal background and knowledge, such as Juliana, will accept as a vice chair. And then since you already have secretarial experience, seems to me, Shane, you'd be excellent as a secretary. I'm going to take Ms. Whitman's stance on that, and I'm not ready for the secretary. I think that would be, I think that would be, I think think that would be a great group, unless I I actually may take you off the hook, Shane, and ask Mr. G. Okay, so I'm going to stop it right there. And I can't emphasize enough that everybody needs to pay attention close attention and listen closely to these next few comments because you're about to know if you don't colonel crockett especially in the comments you're about to know what wasp stands for so listen closely here we go jeter because i i think somebody with mr jeter's experience can help us in that capacity and whether we like me as a white anglo-saxon protestant and um, we can balance it out with a woman and I think, if I'm not mistaken, you're actually black. So that would count to balance the committee. Well, it depends on who you ask. Guys. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> They're a very diversified group right off the bat. A white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, a woman, and somebody who might be black. Oh, we're not making this up. He literally said that. What are the chances? What are the chances that the candidate for cockroach of the week, two of them, are potentially sitting side by side? <laughs> oh, this is this is one of the great comments that we've had from public officials on this show. I mean, this is almost Zamboni level, almost. If you're still watching Mike Eccles, I mean, you got to give it up. That's pretty good there. I don't, I don't know if you rise to this level or not this week. <laughs> yeah, this is this is all right. So let's listen to that again. All right, let me get uh, your wise comments out of the way. Here we go. <laughs> listen again. And 
whether we like me as a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant and uh, we can balance it out with a woman. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, you're actually black. So that would count to balance the committee. Well, it depends on who you ask. Guys. That's true. That's true. Uh, uh, these days, I am not afraid to have to, to that question. I would like to make a motion at this time. So they went ahead and, and nominated Preston and, and approved him agency role <laughs> as, as chairman. Um, and, and look, you know, I, I don't think he said it as a racist comment or anything. I mean, my feeling you know, from listening to him is that he's actually a good guy and probably do w- so, do well as the chair of this committee. So I, I just wanted to point out to Ryan Haygood, it's not the Masons you need to be worried about, brother. You know, it's them dirt daubers called the wasps that you need to be worried about. <laughs> oh, this is, you know, I, I was pretty tired out after being in front of the keyboard today, but this part of the show right here, I've been waiting to play that comment all evening so well look you know what i I gotta tell you when i first heard you know that i i had to look it up i said well well, what exactly surely i did you know that actually wasp you know that i mean i googled it i gotta tell you well i i thought it was like being a member of a what's the marvel universe deal um oh come on uh the the uh deal that um well, the deal that the black guys <laughs> ahead of, um, oh, I can't think of it. It's a stupid long acronym. And of course it's a comical deal, but that was kind of my immediate thought. It was, it was a top secret Marvel universe. They're superheroes, I guess, but. Oh no, there, oh, no. there is actually, it wasp was a real thing. And if you'll pull up my share screen. So, uh, I can't shake. I can't change it a little bit, but let me read it to you. In the 21st yeah. century, WASP is often applied as a derogatory label to those with social privilege who are perceived to be snobbish and exclusive, such as being members of restrictive private social clubs. I have a social club. <laughs> nah. <laughs> There's so- <clears throat> So many ways we could go with this. I want to uh, thank your lovely wife who is on the ball tonight. Shield. That would be correct. Thank you, Kara. Um, so a white social club. So now I, I've got to give the colonel a second here. So the colonel did say he is a card carrying member of WASP. Now you have to be careful with this Colonel Crockett. Okay. Because you know how things change nowadays. So this is social privilege which we could equate to white Anglo-Saxon wasp privilege now. I guess we don't even have to say white privilege. We can just say wasp privilege. Oh, so like King David when he and and Charles Jacobs talking about Zambonis, we can say yeah. they're exercising their wasp privilege? That That is correct. They have the ability to run over somebody with a Zamboni at will. Okay, well, I got to make sure I understand this, though, but isn't, isn't King David a Catholic? Uh... Well, no, he was at First Church, so he's got to be a Protestant. Well, I think he kind of slipped up and accidentally ended up in First Church to, you know, do a political stump deal there. I, I think he's a, a Catholic that was in a Protestant church. Uh, and, and look, no offense to any of our friends out there that are Catholics. Well, but I'm just, if you're a Catholic, just, you're not a Protestant. But, yeah, but so if you're a Catholic, there's no way you can be a WASP member, right? That's right. You can't be a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. By definition, you can't be. So the Catholics are excluded from this. Well, but so if you got social privilege and you're perceived as snobbish and exclusive and a member of a restrictive private social club and you're Catholic, what does that make you? I don't know. I am so confused about all of this now. I didn't even know there was such a thing as WASP until right before the show. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, well, and, and thanks to your uh, 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 perfect Googling skills, you were able to figure it out real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, there's things in life that's important and you just, you have to know, you have to know. Yeah, you have to know. All so right. what else did these, these fine folks in trying well, to shoot down uh, term limits, what, what did, what did they yeah. come up with? 
So Vicki Whitman, uh, she nominated Shane as the vice chair. They eventually voted on that nom- uh, and elected uh, Shane as the vice chair. And then they uh, nominated Sandra Moorhart as a secretary. And she said she had good note-taking skills, which is a plus. As, you know, Shane let everybody know for the secretary. So they uh, they have a secretary. So Vicki Whitman is a secretary. Shane is the vice chair. and um, White Anglo-Saxon Protestant Preston Friedley is the chair. Um, and I guess, well, the black man in the deal is just left out. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> look, nothing against Lee Jeter. I, Lee Jeter is a great guy. We're, we're friends, so he'll get the joke. All right. Anyway, so I want to skip ahead to the 28-minute mark because Shane asked about recording and live streaming. So let's uh, let's talk about that. That we nom- or I nominate Preston Friedley for chair of the Charter Committee. Uh, hold on, let me skip up. It was an eight right, to zero, zero. adopted or uh, eight to elected zero. as vice chair. Mm-hmm. Richard, I, I just have one question before we move from that. You said it's being recorded there. Is it currently being live streamed or is it not live streamed? It's not live streamed. I don't know. Okay. But we can, in our next meeting, have that an agenda item where we're requesting that it be live streamed. Be live streamed. Okay. I think that with a caveat that, again, I believe I'm not, I don't know how it works, but I know that some city IT is involved and some people from NIPSI are involved so that that all right, look, let me stop there because this is kind of related to the Cypress District and their stupid tech quandary that they had the last meeting. It's not that hard to live stream, folks. I mean, granted, the city council does a pretty good job on their live stream. Your audio, Richard Gray, y'all need to boost your audio up a little bit uh, because your audio, while clear is a, and clean, is a little weak when we're listening to it streaming. But this is not complicated. If you need to do it on a budget, literally you can do it with an iPhone and iPad. Y'all have pretty darn good audio that just picks up the, uh, so the iPhones or iPads will pick up the ambient audio and it can easily be live stream. I mean, it literally wouldn't cost any money if you wanted to do it that way. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> Nobody's wanting to let the wasp thing go. <laughs> uh, I know. Oh, Let's see, uh, Paul, here. Paul Johnson said it all started with Henry VIII. Why, um, Shelly, Shelly Renee Polk says, uh, there was a book written about wasps as they were referred to as American aristocracy. Mm-hmm. Somebody's doing a little homework there on it or, or knows their stuff. So, uh, thank I, you for that, Shelly Renee. I guess I'll have to align with Mike Eccles. I was out chasing wood ducks or something, I guess. Uh, you started this wasp deal. I didn't know anything about it until <laughs> you figured it out. All right. Oh, but it's good stuff. It's good stuff. I'm going to jump ahead just a little bit. I want you to listen to this, though, about how how the Charter Commission members received their notifications. Listen closely. Yes, about the secretary position before anybody volunteers. The secretary has the hardest job. You're going to have to contact you're going to have to email or call to make sure the committee members know, because I know we all got snail mail for the invite to this meeting. Did you hear what he just said? They got really? snail mail. That means U.S. Postal Service mail for the invites to that meeting. And what wow. they do, send it out Friday during the impending you know, ice doom? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And look, Jeffrey, he, Jeffrey Sadhouse says a tablet works. Well, I would argue that the tablet doesn't really work for the police jury, but they could make it work because I can go to those meetings and live stream or record it with my iPhone and make it 10 times better than the police jury does. Or with my iPad, I can. Um, so it absolutely can be done. But yeah, they. so according to Cheatham, they got their invitations by snail mail. And here we are in 2024. Not surprise. Not surprise. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's jump ahead. David Johnson nominates Juliana Parks as secretary, and she promptly declines. So let's uh, hear that. 
ahead and put up at this time, Mr. Chair, Mrs. Parks, if she'll forgive me for doing that. I know she's got a pretty full plate, but I think she can step up to the plate and bring some some organization to this table in this committee. I don't believe that I have the time to be able to do that job as well as somebody else might be able to at the moment. If there's anybody else who would like to volunteer, I would. <laughs> she just doesn't have the time. I mean, she's on the library board. She's on. She does work for the sheriff's office. She's a, a police jury member. She's now on this charter commission. I mean, just where is she going to find the time? Uh, you know, she's probably being honest. She probably doesn't. And she's got to sue people in the middle of that, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me answer this uh, comment here. Let's see. Thomas Shea says, uh, Rex, you know about snail mail, but not about wasp. Uh, Thomas, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. Well, uh, it, it sounds like they had a productive meeting. I mean, they, they, they got all the, the racial and sex biases all out of the way, out in the open. They got all that behind them. So now they can start working on making some policy for Bossier City. Yeah, it, it was overall. I mean, you know, it was the very first meeting, but they did get off to a good start. Uh, again, for those of you, you know, that hadn't been paying attention or just joined us, I'll be posting the whole video uh, here in just a little, about 45 minutes. But I do want to jump to this one comment because Amanda Nottingham gives us a little insight into live streaming, but also on the time frame for the Charter Commission. So this is a little oh. important. Let's Let's listen to this. The council meetings uh, for convenience, live streaming, those kinds of things to, I think, be as seamless as possible um, following council meetings on the same days is ideal, um, the marshals and for the setup of everything. Um, and then I did want to, the 18 months, um, I believe, and Mr. Ray can clarify, that is from today until, or from the resolution when it was passed, the ordinance until it has to go before the voters. So the actual commission doesn't have 18 months. That is until, you know, to get it before the voters. Um, that's the entirety of the enti of the process. Okay. So, so what, that's great. even less. So we'll have to kind of look at that and give us a sort of scope of work that we're we'll gonna have to cover. And I do think that it's important that given that we have the city council districts and of which we now know that Possibly two of them are not covered on the commission. That we'd like to have meetings that are. So this some, is important. We can have our formal meetings always here. And then I think that we need to have some community meetings that are held out into whether it's rec districts or city marshals' offices and things of those nature. Uh, we need to have them out in the community so that we can get as much input as we can. And then I'll get with you so that we can work out a specific schedule. So I think that's a pretty, <laughs> did, did uh, Juliana pretty good say, idea. Can we, did Juliana say, can we set a limit to those meetings? <laughs> yeah, or can she skip those meetings? <laughs> That'd be about <laughs> about her, uh, her uh, MO. So uh, in case y'all didn't catch it right there, so they're talking about having, of course, their formal meetings here, but having town hall style meetings at various locations across the city in each of the districts to get input from, you know, citizens and constituents of Bossier City. Great um, idea. Which I think is a great idea. I, I, I think that's uh, definitely a good idea. So uh, let me jump ahead here to Lee Jeter brings up a comment about the long city council meetings and limited time. Mr. Chair, um, Attorney Ray mentioned earlier about not having a budget and having a time limit. And the only issue I see with meeting after the council meetings is that the council meetings go long. And we are on a time limit to be out of this facility by a certain time. We're going to have to take that in consideration because I don't think we need to be rushed and doing the people's business, but neither should the council be rushed so that we can meet. So. So he's talking about, obviously, if they have the meetings after the council meeting, even if the council's done by four, that would only give them an hour, you know, based on the IT people and all that. Now, uh, Jim Whitman, the city marshal, does chime in here uh, later in the meeting, although the audio is a little muted. And he does say that, look, if y'all have these meetings on Monday evenings, which are after the MPC and some other meetings, he could do some flexible scheduling with some deputies and would have no problem providing deputies 
you know, quote unquote, after hours for these meetings. So the marshal's office is definitely willing to do what they can to work to have these meetings when people can attend after work. So uh, everybody keep that in mind. Uh, let's jump ahead and listen to Shane talk about doing the meetings at six, like the school board, because, of course, Juliana tries to shoot that down. Okay, wait a minute. Andy All Monica right. says each member should have their own town hall meetings in their districts, just like each police juror should. Well, Andy, that would be a novel idea, but the majority of the members all live in the same district. They're, they're not spread out and they're not appointed by way of the districts. That's a point that Colonel Crockett at one of the council meetings made that the, the, uh, councilman should have someone from the district that they represent. Right. Then, uh, as they mentioned in the meeting there, Andy, two of the districts in the city are actually not represented on this charter commission. Although the charter commission arguably should represent everybody, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, Jeffrey Sadow says the end game for those that are asking of this is to neuter term limits. Yeah, that's a pretty good summary of it right there, Mr. Sadow. Thank you. All right. So let's hear, uh, Cheatham talk about the 6 p.m. meetings. I, uh, I feel, and obviously eventually you're going to find out when I'm passionate about something, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty vocal on it, but. I believe these meetings must be at 6 p.m. They, they have to be after people get off work. They get off work at 5 o'clock. They've got time to get here. I do realize that creates a concern for having people working in here. We've got to have three security guards. I, I realize that creates that. But at least in the beginning for like the first four meetings that we're going to have every two weeks, I believe they have to be in the evening to get that public input. We talked about a town hall. Maybe we can do the town. All right. So I'll stop it right there. Um, and basically the school board meetings, uh, they already do this and you know, granted you're not going to satisfy everybody and not everybody's going to be able to attend at 6 PM. But the biggest gripe among all of us and citizens is that when you have it in the middle of the afternoon, you're really excluding a lot of people that are working, you know, flexible schedules, uh, taken out of the, of the picture there, but that's when most people are actually at work. All right. Now, Richard Ray, of course, goes on a dissertation about the, the logistical challenges and all that, and maybe they should have the next one at 11 o'clock before the city council meeting, but I want to skip ahead to Juliana Parks again a comment about the after hours meetings um, I believe by doing something like that you're going to be I know that you think you're going to be including people who work till five that they will be able to attend but another thing I think that we need to consider is that you're going to be effectively excluding parents who have children who don't have care after school or who have after school activities or have to do homework um, so while you are including one part you're also excluding another so I but think listen to, to Shane Shane's that. got a good return yeah, that's, that's a good point although if we schedule these meetings out two weeks out they can make arrangements to get a sitter or someone grandma or grandpa to attend that I, I just think the optics <laughs> of that I, and I agree <laughs> there are going to be some good people job that attend, yeah it was good but the optics are going to be much better if we're willing to meet after people are off work. Maybe we can. Oh, did you hear that? The optics are going to be better. <laughs> Excellent reply to Miss Negative Nancy Juliana Parks there. Uh, let me, let's see what her end comment was. We could do both. Have, yeah, one. So just a point to think about. So if we are here to do what the people really want us to do. And if we start our work without knowing what the people want, then are we doing the people's work? I think. All right. So I'll stop it right there. She had a good point that, Hey, maybe we need to have a few town halls first, not do any official business, get, but get feedback from folks. And then good we can point. incorporate that into the agenda. Yeah. It actually was an excellent point. And I'm so glad that Shane shot negative Nancy Juliana down on her 
retort for the 6 p.m. She's literally just trying to complicate everything. As usual. All right, so honestly, that's the majority of it. They The next meeting is going to be January the 30th, 11 a.m. So that's an hour before lunch. Hopefully that will give them plenty of time to have their meeting and time for the city council to get set up for their meeting as well. So the next meeting, very important if you can attend it because they're honestly probably not going to live stream it. We may live stream it. Wes may live stream it. At the very least, we'll try to be there and get record the video so we can publish it later. Um, you know, I'm sure one of us will be there to do that. And again, thanks to Wes for getting this video. And so we had, you know, pretty good video and audio of that meeting. Well, I, oh. I know that we have, go ahead. Well, I, just one more thing. Uh, Richard Ray does mention, let me, let me jump to this one. Richard Ray does mention a binder handout. Uh, I'm not, you got that in front of us on that handout. In that binder that I passed out at the beginning, yes. in the initial section, there's some basic historic documents, resolutions. This body is actually the third charter commission in Mosier City's history. All right, so he goes a little bit about the history right there, but public information request for that binder. Colonel Crockett, I task you with doing a public info request to get that binder or a copy of it. All right. Any any final thoughts on this, Mr. Lowry? I am so done with the Charter Commission. I got to tell you, it, it's like <laughs> it, it's like eating Cheerios without no milk. You just don't do it. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Oh, we can't leave out Danielle Marriott. She says, behind every great cameraman is the wife at home with the kids. So while we were out there risking life and limb in the ice storm to get this video, Danielle was doing her part by taking care of the Marriott children. <laughs> so we do want to recognize that. <laughs> Michael Ferris, Charter Commission for Dummies 2024 edition. That's probably what it says. That would make a great background for a show event <laughs> notification. Hmm. <laughs> I think it really would. Well, right. I know that we have got a lot of other topics to go through. I mean, we, we haven't even, the Bossier Parish School Board and oh, you know yeah. the interview for the vacant seat. We we were supposed to cover that last show, and I don't know. I I, I think probably we need to put it on to the next show again. Yeah, I we'll mean, probably punt that one a little bit because it's not a pressing matter, but it, we do need to talk about it and discuss it. So, do you want to dive into the Cypress District tonight, or do you want to punt that one again? Well, that one's kind of long as well, too, and I think All we've right. got time on it, but we need to cover that one because there was some gems, and of course, you were there and, and a part of that show, but uh, the public needs to know about that. Y'all have a uh, millage uh, oh, yeah. renewal coming up in April from these guys out here, and you're going to have to make a decision what you're going to do on it, and according to them in that video, there's actually going to be three millages on the ballot um, uh, in April. Yeah, that is correct. So that would be two from the city council and then one from the Cypress district, which covers most of the parish. And we did publish the district map. I don't know if you saw it, Duke, but uh, the Cypress district did actually send me a high res PDF of the, of the Cypress district now. So we've got that and we have it published online so if you don't know if you're under the taxing authority of the Cypress District, you most likely are. But go to Bossier Watch and just scroll down until you see the map, which will show you. You can zoom in on it and all that and find where you live and just look inside there. If you're in the, I think they've got it colored blue. If you're in the blue area, you're in the Cypress District. Well, what Gary White said, and, you, and you, you're on the Bossier City thing, it may be more than three, but he said the library had one, library board had one, okay, as well as Benton. But I thought, maybe I we thought, discussed it, yeah, Benton, Benton, Benton pulled theirs. I think that's correct. Andy, maybe you know, you can let us know in the comments. Benton was supposed to have some kind of millage or something on the ballot, but I think Benton pulled theirs. If you happen to know about that, Andy, let us know in the comments. Yeah, so we'll cover that in depth maybe the uh, the next show. And, uh, you know, in 
somebody you, you just wanna... messaged me. Somebody just messaged me and said the police jury is uh, probably going to be uh, queuing queuing up a renewal themselves here real fast. Ah, okay. So you want me to go ahead and jump over to the uh, Cypress District and we'll go through that, or do we want to uh, push it to next show? I say we push it to next show. Okay. How long we've we been at it now? We've been torturing. Uh, we're people at for... two hours. We're at nine o'clock. I know we've been torturing people for a while. We don't want to lose y'all and where you're out. But I do want to give it one last shot about getting kicked off. Oh, no. Here I got, we go. I, I've got to. You know me. I, I, I'm i just, I do my best. Now, I, I now look, if if you're a, one of our leftist Democrat friends, I'll just apologize up front. Y'all just got to have a laugh with us, okay? Yeah. You just got to have right. a laugh. Well, before we get booted off all the platforms tonight, let me remind, well, first, let me thank everybody for watching the show and paying attention to the charter commission meeting. We're going to push the Cypress district stuff to next meeting, the school board and the stuff, school board and the school board stuff to next meeting. The, um, full, and we meeting. got some, we got some anonymous stuff on the school board too, right? Oh some yeah. Proton we mail? So, so, yeah. We got some questions that we need to address and, and start doing some digging. So we'll put some people on that. And at, let me remind everybody at nine 30, the video, the entire transcribed video is going to post on Bozier Watch of the Charter Commission meeting. I would ask that everybody that can share that around because we need as many people in Bozier City to see that and know what's going on as possible. All right. And of course, you know, if you got stuff you want to share, well, let's go make a Proton Mail account. Keep it anonymous. Send it to Bozier Watch at ProtonMail.com. Don't put any identifying information in. And all that sort of thing, because obviously Proton Mail does work as Channel Three has so diligently been showing on the news. Um, all right, so uh, let's try to get booted off the platforms again. What what have you got? Have you got it queued up and ready for me to share your screen? I'm ready to go. All right, here we go, folks. Oh, no. have a good night, folks. <laughs> yeah, it's your boy Joe. But I mean Joe Rowe. Joan, Jericho, Jericho Obama's we be. I'm the big guy. I'm the big guy. I'm the big guy. Xavier on the beat. Black people can't get voter ID. They don't have Wi-Fi like you and me. I call all Hispanic people and takes. And you ain't black if you don't vote for me. Trump will put your back in chains. I love to shower with my daughter to this very day. My son Hunter is a good kid. He is a genius. Throw guns in the trash and scandals on his. You can't go to a Dunkin' Donuts or even a 7-Eleven. Unless you have just a slightest of an Indian accent. I do not want my children growing up in the racial jungle and sharing a bus. I'm so sad that they close Toys R Us. And I really miss Robert Bird. He was my butt. I love Smith and Children. I love Hillary Clinton. I love spending billions of your tax dollars, drawing, striking buildings. Open up the border and land in the fentanyl. If you change the gender, we'll promote you to general. Want to work for senators, expose all your genitals. The girls with Stephen Hawking always ate all their vegetables. You can't go to a Dunkin' Donuts or even a 7-Eleven. Unless you have just the slightest of an Indian accent. I do not want my children growing up. In the racial jungle and sharing the bus. I'm so sad that they closed Toys R Us. And I really miss Robert Bird. He was my bud. Oh, uh, if we don't get booted this time, we'll never get booted. I'm sure they'll flag us for copyright somehow, somewhere. Oh, hell. Didn't see that. <laughs> so, anyway. so 
So, guys, I really had a change of heart. I was really wrong right. over the last few years. Oh. Why Joe Biden is the greatest president. So, we're... <laughs> We're out of here, folks. Y'all have a good night, y'all. <laughs> good night, and thanks for watching.